Yes. Yeah, you can bring them in. All right, thank you. Welcome, uh, Jane and John Smith, right? All right, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, welcome to Plant Parenthood. What brings you here today? Oh, you both are looking to get to be, to be plant parents, right? Okay, all right. And you don't, you don't know where to start? I mean, it's in the name, isn't it? <laughs> but don't you worry. I will let you know all of the best ways to get started on this, uh, on this new journey. All right, so first things first. How much sunlight do you have in your home? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you live in a basement, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but most plants that stay in the basement, they never see the light of day. And you wanna know why? Because they don't get no sun and they wither and they die. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm not saying people that, I don't know, that uh, reside under, under homes um, should not have plants, but it's not recommended. The exception is this. If you do have adequate sunlight in the basement, then, um, then you're qualified to, uh, to have a plant um but if it's i mean uh you know we want these plants to thrive okay and um, sure we have like grow lights you know artificial light that we can use to help um to help them grow but it's not a good way of living, okay? So, I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I'm gonna have to reassess your, your files and um, you're gonna have to provide me with um, just kind of how um, your living situation is looking like. Looking like. <laughs> uh, sorry, excuse me. I'm getting a call from the receptionist. Oh. Okay, so so they're qualified to to raise plants. You've looked through their papers and everything. Okay, okay, that's good to hear. I'll proceed then. Thank you. What's this latest model of orange? You know what? This this is pretty. This is an ancient model. This is the orange, um, orange three model of, uh, uh, smartphones and, um, Stacy Post has done such a bang on job that it's lasted me for over 11 years. And I mean, why replace something that's still working? Anyways, anyways, let's get back on topic. So my receptionist told me that you've already submitted your files and your documents and that you guys are qualified to raise a plant. So that's good to hear because I was kind of hesitant to um, let you know more about your options. Um, because, yeah, 
if you're not qualified, then it's a waste of my time, okay? And time is, time is money. So, nothing personal. I hope you understand. <clears throat> Sorry, is this my, my speaking a little too aggressively? Are you guys following me? Okay, good, good. I am gonna try and take my time um, when I explain more about the best plants that you can start raising as soon as you leave my office. Let's start with the basics. In the beginning, I mentioned that light is super important. Light for plants is basically water for us humans. That's why I stressed out the importance of having that. You guys have enough, enough light in your home. So I'll move on to the next factor that helps facilitate the growth of plants. Okay, so you've got, you've got the light. Next you need water and another thing that is very important is the kind of pot that you use to um to store these plants it's always good to have to use to use a pot that has um drainage holes at the bottom of it because um, without that, and if, for example, if you overwater it, your plant, and the water is not able to, um, you're not able to release that water, then it builds up into that pot. And that could lead to, to a couple of problems for your plant. You can risk overwatering it and then when the soil is too moist and um, yeah, the water accumulates, then it might even cause the plant to rot. Right, so I'll show you some examples of, uh, oh, of some good pots to start off with. So here, here we've got like a really nice, um, ceramic pots um, sounds pretty nice too it's like a it's like a little makeshift um, what do you call it those like singing bowls but it's just a basic ceramic pot with uh, with one drainage hole at the very bottom. But honestly, if you're just starting out, you, well, you don't need to start off with a fancy pot like this. You can start off with, um, Something as simple as this plastic pot. And what's great about these tiny ones is uh, they've got like the best amount of drainage holes. So if you accidentally overwater your plants um, and you haven't packed the soil too tightly, and um, your plants can easily be uh, revived and remedied. This is a pot, a uh, plastic pot. That's great. 
for uh, smaller plants. So you have to look at the size. It fits into the palm of my hands. This is also um, just another similar, <laughs> similar plant with eight. Oh no, this has 12, 12 drainage holes. Look, look at that. This is a, this, this plastic pot is uh, just a little bit better than the other one. Because it even comes with a little gold um, packaging. You can make any any plastic pot look look nice for your plants. Mm -hmm. All right, now you know a little bit about pots. Um, it's I wouldn't say it's difficult raising plants. It's just that you have to remember to water them, not too much or not too little. Give them the sun that they need um, and just be consistent. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys recommendations um oh are you having second thoughts about raising a plant is there something that you want me to clarify or um mm, okay i mean yeah we'll get you started off with with um a couple of plants that are uh, low maintenance so you know it's it can be quite daunting um taking care of plants for the first time but i promise that if you're able to keep at least maybe one or two plants alive then then i think um you can you can start trying your hand at more advanced plants that require a little bit more maintenance but but yeah once you get the hang of it then I think you guys will make the best plant parents out there on that thought let me introduce you to um one of the best plants that is a uh, very very low maintenance <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> um but yeah it's always good to double check um which plant you get by doing a quick search on your phone or downloading um like a plant app or something like that just to check some specifications and requirements of what that certain plant requires. All right, so. This, this a beautiful, bright snake plant over here may surprise you. You've probably seen it around, maybe at a relative's house. But these are actually very fairly common. Um, but yeah, a little I'll tell you a little bit about this. This snake plant. Snake plants. This one. They, they've been known to thrive on uh, 
neglect. <laughs> and I'm not saying that you should neglect your snake plants or a snake plants, but this one is considered low maintenance because it doesn't require sunlight. You know, you can just leave it at the corner of your room or office like I did in the back over there. I'm just gonna put it back because it's a, it's a little heavy. But yes, that's snake plants. It uh, usually only needs watering once every month. So if you're quite a busybody and don't have time, much time on your hands, then that's the perfect plant. In fact, that's a plant that I would suggest that you can keep if uh, you're living in a space that has minimal sunlight. Another good thing about the snake plants is that um, they help uh, purify and filter the air. So it's doing work while it's just, it's just, you know, chilling out in a pot. <laughs> so I have two more plants to recommend to you. And the other one I'm gonna get right now. Okay. So this here, with its a nice uh, vine, this here is the Golden Pothos. This one is also quite easy to, um, to maintain and propagates. And propagation simply means to um, to make a copy or uh, reproduce the same um, the same plant or organism from its parent plant. So, for example, if you were to cut one of these stems here and just place it in water, roots will start growing. And um, you can just make another plant from the same one. Another copy of it, basically. So, yeah. And I'll show you... Um, this is one of my favorite pots. And I don't know, I recommend getting your plant, their pots from, uh, from Dollarima. Their stuff, surprisingly, has been getting better. Although this one was from Amazon because I had this this weird phase of just buying pots on there. <laughs> just because they looked more intricate and nice. But anyways, this one also has a, a drainage hole, which is good. But yeah, I'll show you right now. The plants that I've been that I've propagated from the previous plant that I showed you. So if you look here, you can see that you can just uh, take care of a plant without any soil or a pot per se. You just need a vessel and. Uh, for that, we have these tubes, which are quite nice. So this is the same golden pothos as the other one. I 
I've kind of been propagating it a whole lot, so <laughs> this is the third, the third, no, one, two, yeah, the third iteration from the previous golden possums that I showed you, but if you look closely, you can see like all of the, the fresh roots and the old ones that have grown in this, um, this clear uh, pot that I've used, <laughs> or jar. <laughs> Lastly, I recommend um, a spider plant. Probably guess why they call it that. I mean, just, just look at this thing. <laughs> But this is an also easy plant to take care of. Um, doesn't require that much maintenance either. And it's quite, it's quite pretty. I like this one a lot. And uh, this pot right here. This one doesn't have any drainage holes, so when there's no drainage holes in the pots, I just use one that has one. So I just keep it there. Just like that. So yeah, the, the two previous plants that I've showed you, the spider plants and the golden pothos, I water those once a week. Um, also for the golden pothos, I like to just like have a water mister and just like lightly mist them um, every couple of few days. It's, it's optional, it's not necessary, but I find that it yields like much more growth um, when I do mist them. So, yeah, those are the three plants that I recommend for you new plant parents. <laughs> also, one more tip, because I know it's a lot, it's a lot of information to take in, but once you, you get into it, then it'll be, hopefully, it'll be easier. But I find that it's very important to have one of these things. This here is a moisture moisture meter. So basically, um, you put this into the soil, and it tells you whether or not the soil is dry, moist. Or wet. For me, when it comes to watering these, I like to water my plants so that the um, the measuring is right in the middle and says moist. So yeah, I feel like if you have that, you can tell whether or not like what the state of your soil is. Um, and if you know that, then you can make sure that it has adequate it's been adequately watered and it's not over watered or under watered and then if you look at it again <laughs> it shows you when the soil is dry so that alone can indicate to you when it's time to water your plants so you know that i think helps me taking care of plants much much easier. So yeah, I think having a moisture meter is invaluable. You must, well, you should have that in your plant toolkit. Um, oh, yeah, don't, you don't have to worry about um, going to store and buying it yourself. Just talk to my receptionist and she'll hook you up with a free um, moisture meter before you guys leave today. <laughs>
yeah, honestly, like, I think if, if all plants, um, parents owned a moisture meter, then <laughs> there would definitely be a reduction of, uh, of plant deaths because it could have been prevented, you know? So yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for, you know, doing your part and being informed of what to expect um, before you become a plant parent. You know, people, oh, there's so many people nowadays that just buy plants without doing the research. And then they wonder why maybe a couple days later, the plant has died. Oh, it's just, it's just so sad, but thank you for talking with me today. If you have any more questions, um, feel free to call me or send me an email. And yeah, yeah, I wish you both Jane and John Smith the best of luck on uh, the plant's journey. <laughs> Take care and uh, I hope you have a great rest of the day. <laughs> Take care and I hope you both have a great rest of the day.